Kenny, I'm back with another video. I know you still have football games going on, but I decided to take this opportunity to stop and give out breaking news in regards to the Hall of Fame. Not the Football Hall of Fame, this time the Baseball Hall of Fame. And as we know, I already have my gripes about the Hall of Fame for baseball, how they, I'm kind of annoyed they don't put as many people in, and I'm kind of annoyed that sometimes you get shutouts. But this is not one of those days. Fortunately, we did not, I did not have to deal with that. Because today, on this very day, we got not one, not two, not three, but we got six people inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Four of them from the Golden Days Committee, and then two of them from the Early Baseball Committee. Now, there are obviously some people I would want to see on this that didn't get nominated. Like, I wanted Doc Adams and you know, Tip O'Neill and Pete Browning for the early days. And I've also want to see if we would get... I would also wonder if we would be able to get to see Kurt Flood on the Golden Era because of what he did for free agency. But either way, I'm very happy with the ones that were nominated. And as for the ones nominated, the ones that really stood out to me are all six of them. Let's start with the Golden Era. The Golden Days. Tony Oliva. Wonderful, legendary hitter for the Minnesota Twins. Led the league in batting, led the AL in batting average three times. He missed by one vote a couple of years ago, and he's been in shrine. I am so happy for Tony Oliva and his family. I'm very happy that he's alive to see it this very day. Sorry, the alarm's just going off. Um, now, for the second person that got inducted from the Golden, Golden Days Committee, we got Gil Hodges. Gil Hodges was someone that was a longtime um, fielder for the Dodgers. He also was the Mets manager. His numbers retired by the Mets. He is someone that many, 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 many people really want to see and get inducted, and he did get inducted. I'm very happy for him. Uh, Mini Minoso, one of the greatest Mexican players to ever live, Mr. White Sox. Um, he is someone that a lot of people have wanted to see make it as a pioneer for African for black baseball players, as a pioneer for Legends in general, I really want to see Minnie Minoso. And outside of Dick Allen, I thought he was the most deserving person here. But unfortunately, there was no Dick Allen. But I'm okay with that because the final person from the Golden Days Committee that got inducted was Jim Cott, one of the most dominant pitchers of his era and a 16-time Gold Glove winner. Jim Cott missed by a couple votes a couple a few years ago. Think about that. 16 Gold Gloves. Getting one is pretty big. 16 gold gloves. He was an exceptional fielder as a pitcher, but 16 gold gloves in a row. That's something that no one has ever done before. I mean, Maddox had 18, but I don't think they were all consecutive. But they like Jim Cott, being part of the game so long, got the broadcasting award, which was basically like their honor for the broadcasters. Doesn't mean that broadcasters can't eventually make it, but so far that's just a separate honor they give. And then finally... At being a part of the game for so long, he got inducted. This is such huge news for Jim Cott. And just like Tony Oliva, I'm very happy that he's alive to see it. Even though Minoso and Hodges' family won't be able to, I'm happy their families will be able to enjoy it for them. And as for the early days, now I'm a little disappointed that unfortunately we have to wait another 10 years for these people, at least for now to get another look, but I'm very happy that what they did, they made the most of it. Buck O'Neill finally got the got the induction he greatly deserved. He might have gotten the Lifetime Achievement Award, but that's a, a silver medal. That's only the second place. That's not the full thing, but this is the full thing. If you're gonna treat someone like he's deserving of the ultimate honor, you might as well give him the ultimate honor, and that's exactly what Buck O'Neill did. A pioneer for the sport, a great Negro, a good Negro League player, what the person that made Negro Leagues popular in the first place. He's the reason as to why Negro League has its own museum. He's the reason why Negro Leagues are talked about to this very day. And I'm so happy for Buck O'Neill being a pioneer and a contributor for the sport. But out of all these names, the one I was easily most interested in, the one I wanted the most, and the guy that I didn't even think was going to make it because of how crowded I felt the early baseball um, nominees were. And that person was Bud Fowler. People always ask, who is the 
Jackie Robinson, everyone says, is the first black baseball player. But that's not true. The first black baseball player was Bud Fowler 45 years prior. Yes, Jackie may have been, was the first one after the gentleman's agreement ended. But Bud Fowler, as we know, was the first ever black baseball player. No question in my mind, that's someone I really, really wanted. The same way I want Charles Files for the Football Hall of Fame, I wanted Bud Fowler for the Baseball Hall of Fame. Say we will about everyone that's played Negro Leagues. There would be no Negro Leagues if it was not for Bud Fowler. Bud Fowler is the reason why we have people like Satchel Paige and Josh and, and you know, Jackie Robinson. He's the reason why we have a Buck O'Neill. He's the reason why we have all these legendary names in the history of Negro Leagues. Without Bud Fowler, there is no Negro Leagues. He might not have started anything, but whenever he was on any teams, he was easily the best player on those teams. And I'm so happy that over 150 years since he started playing baseball, he's been dead for over a century now, or around a century now. But 100, nearly 150 years after he started playing ball professionally and became the first ever black professional baseball player, he finally, at long last, finally gets his due in Cooperstown, a place that is already honoring him with plaques outside. And just like Buck O'Neill, if you're going to treat someone like he's a Hall of Famer, you might as well make him a Hall of Famer. And that's why I was so happy for Bud Fowler. And I didn't even think he was going to make it. I thought Bill Dowling would get in by the skin of his teeth. But you know what? As much as I'm a little disappointed that Dowling didn't make it, at the same time, I'm still happy that we got six people in because I, can, I only thought we were going to get three, and we got twice as much. That's something that I didn't think the Baseball Hall of Fame was going to do, especially considering it seemed like they wanted a heck of a less. I'm so happy by the larger class, and especially with the fear and the worry that we might get a shutout, and if we do, it might just give you like one or two, like maybe like Roland or Schilling or Ortiz. Even if we don't get anyone, that at least makes this ballot worthwhile. Because these people should have been inducted last year if it was not for COVID. And to see, and even though Dick, Bill Dolan and Dick Allen didn't make it, at the same time, it's not the end of the world. They'll be considered the next time. And even though I do want to see the 19th century people get more recognition, like a Pete Browning and a Doc Adams, with enough pressure, it's eventually going to happen one of these days. And again, thank you so much for everyone that's watched. It's been a rough couple of days for me, but this really... This really perked up my emotions. It gave it a whole 180 degree turn. And I'm so, so, so happy for all the six people that made it. I'm happy for Buck O'Neill and Bud Fowler for what they did in changing Negro League Baseball. I am so happy for the two iconic Minnesota Twins greats in Tony Oliva and Jim Cott who were still alive with us this very day. And I'm just also as happy for the family of Minimoso and the family of Gil Hodges to know that their relative is finally in the place where they belong. I want these people for years. Many people have told me that they wanted them for years, but, and now they're all in. There's still way more work to be done. It's not over. There's still many, many, many great players, coaches, contributors, etc., that deserve it. But right now, it's best that we celebrate the people that did make it as opposed to be upset for the people that didn't. And considering we got a class that I thought was going to be half that, and we got twice as much, I think it's a big victory for everyone. It's a big victory for Negro Leagues. It's a big victory for early baseball. It's a big history for just baseball itself. It's a big day for baseball, especially with the lockout going on. Baseball fans really, really needed this. In a dark tunnel that we all are in right now, I'm so happy that we have this bright light telling us there is still hope. There is still hope for everyone. There's still hope for people down the road. It's probably not going to be six people like, like this time. But hope is on the way and is eventually going to happen. It might never happen, but it's likelier to happen. If people keep having ones like this and hopefully they get another vote for those committees, these things are going to get a lot better real soon. And I'm so happy for hopefully what this could lead to down the road. Anyway, guys, that's my thoughts on the news for the Baseball Hall of Fame. What do you think? Leave me a like. Make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already for Zane62 Media. Uh, hit the notification bell on if you haven't already. 
Again, this is big news. Congrats to the people and their family that got inducted. And I can't wait to see them in July when they unveil their plaques of their relatives and themselves. Thank you, everyone that's watched this. And um, have a great rest of your day. I know I'm going to have a great rest of my day, too. But hope this is as happy for you as it is for me. Thank you so much, everyone. And uh, see you later.